Hey guys, Kyle here, back again with another video. Curtis and I are gonna be working on the Triumph Sunset Tripper. This is a 1970 Triumph TR6R motorcycle. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is removing the clutch assembly and we need to replace the high gear or fourth gear main shaft seal. If you guys don't know Curtis, he's one of the newest employees here at CBS. He is 17 years old and he's in high school. He really enjoys classic cars and classic motorcycles. So this is gonna be the first time he gets to work on a classic British motorcycle. And let me tell you, he's pretty excited. So to teach Curtis, I'm gonna have him do all the legwork, pun intended, and there's gonna be three videos to this series, disassembly, inspection, and assembly. Now that Curtis has the motorcycle on the lift and everything is secure, let's go over what we have to do. So as you can see with the motorcycle just being on the lift for a few minutes, we're already getting some oil leaks. The oil leak is coming from the high gear seal, which is behind the final drive sprocket. To repair this, we have to remove the entire clutch assembly. All right, so first things first, we're gonna work on two things at one time. I'm gonna show Curtis how to remove the exhaust system on the drive side. So that includes the header pipe and the megaphone or the cocktail shaker. Uh, while we're working on this, before we take the primary cover off, I'm gonna have Curtis remove the plug, the drain plug uh, that is in line with the primary chain adjuster. So that can actually start draining oil while we're actually working on removing the uh, exhaust system. Considering how stubborn the exhaust system was trying to remove it. As you can see here, Curtis and I are going back and forth trying to remove it. Uh, it was very challenging, but a little bit of WD-40 and persuasion of the mallet, and we were able to get the cocktail shaker off. Uh, the, getting the cocktail shaker off was one challenge, and then the other challenge was removing the header pipe. Uh, the header pipes on this one are 6970 that have the balance tube, so you're working with three different aspects here, different brackets and things of that sort to be able to remove it. But considering how old the bike is, I would imagine the entire exhaust system hasn't been off probably since it was was made. So with the header pipe and cocktail shaker off, I noticed that the exhaust spigot was a little loose, which is not a big deal because we can tighten that up upon assembly. Before you remove your primary cover and clutch chain wheel, you have to make sure that you have the proper clearance and room to be able to get the cover off. So I have Curtis here loosening the adjuster, the brake rod adjuster, and he's going to loosen the drive side rider's foot peg. With everything loose, we can press down on the brake lever and the rider's peg to be able to get the primary cover off and the clutch chain wheel. With the rider's peg and brake pedal ready to be moved out of the way, I'm having Curtis remove all the primary cover screws and the two acorn nuts. He's gonna be using the Milwaukee drill because of the speed and convenience compared to using a typical screwdriver and a socket wrench. Notice as Curtis is removing the primary cover, his right hand is pressing down on the brake pedal. Obviously it's a little challenging when you're doing it yourself, so I opt in to help him out to be able to pull it down. Once the brake pedal is out of the way, you can remove the entire primary cover. Now that the primary cover is off, I get to inspect the entire clutch assembly. And based off what I see, I think everything looks great. I don't see any debris or any metal shavings. Basically no red flags, so let's move forward. Since we will be installing a new stator and rotor combo, I had Curtis cut the stator wire. Next up, he's going to bend the tab washer so we can prepare to remove the rotor nut, but we're not gonna remove the rotor nut just yet. To be able to remove the rotor nut, we need to remove the clutch assembly. That includes the outer pressure plate and the friction plates. I have a special tricor tool so we can lock the basket. Then we can move back and remove the rotor nut. Using this tool that you will see a little bit later on in the video will also help us lock the basket to remove the main shaft nut so we can pull the entire assembly off. Here, Curtis is working very tediously with the factory T-handle. Then he switched over to using the power drill to quickly remove the three clutch nuts. Although the power drill bit, as you can clearly see, is not the right size, but it is working and we're taking it nice and slow. Now that all three of the clutch nuts have been removed, Curtis can remove the outside pressure plate and begin to remove all 12 clutch plates that are currently in the basket. Since the plates are still, I find that the easiest way to remove all the plates is to use a magnet, just as Curtis is doing. Jump from one side to the other. All right, so here are the tools that we'll be using as I stated earlier in the video. One is gonna lock the hub to the basket and the other tool is going to grip on the inside hub with the handle so we can go ahead and remove the rotor and main shaft nut. Since I don't have a breaker bar handy, I'm gonna be using my Craftsman torque wrench to be able to get leverage and remove the rotor nut. And to be honest with you, this torque wrench, I have absolutely no faith in it. So I do not have any hard feelings being able to use it for such an application like removing the rotor nut. 
Now that the rotor nut has been removed, and before we move the stator, I'm going to modify a socket. This is a Harbor Freight socket. This is half inch. And the reason why I'm going to turn the OD down is to be able to fit the socket in the stator. Some of you guys might have had this issue before where you can't fit a socket between the stator to remove the stator nuts. So this way, I'm spending some time to make this dedicated tool so we can make this job a little bit easier. Looks like the socket worked out just nice. Curtis was able to use the power drill to remove all three of the nuts, and he was also able to remove the stator with the rotor. Now, sometimes a rotor is a tight fit on the shaft, but that all comes down to the interference. Uh, once that has been removed, I have Curtis remove the keyway on the end of the crankshaft, and then also remove the spacer that's behind the keyway or behind the rotor. Moving back to the clutch basket, we have our locking tool in place and we're going to be using our torque wrench for leverage to remove the main shaft nut. Now that Curtis broke the nut loose, he's going to use a power drill to completely remove the main shaft nut. This way it's much faster and more convenient. With the main shaft nut out of the way, Curtis is going to use his magnet to remove the washer. Then he's going to remove the clutch push rod. So the final tool to be able to remove the basket from the main shaft is called a puller. Now the puller itself basically breaks the taper because the sleeve is a female taper and the main shaft is a male taper. And the only way to remove this entire assembly is to use the same tool that Curtis is using. Since the sprocket was being a little bit stubborn, we're going to use a universal puller and basically remove the front sprocket from the end of the crankshaft. And as you can see, it's not very tight and Curtis is simply removing it by hand. Then he switches over to the power drill. Now I've done a lot of clutches over the years and I will tell you it's very challenging to keep the 20 roller bearings in or on the sleeve. Now, if you watch very closely, Curtis was able to remove the entire clutch chain wheel basket without losing the bearings or the bearings falling out. Way to go, man. Now that the clutch chain wheel assembly has been removed, Curtis is going to start working on the primary chain adjuster. And essentially, he's going to unthread the sleeve. This sleeve threads onto the rod and puts pressure on the chain to take up any type of tension. To be able to remove this blade, you have to remove the adjuster. Now that the main shaft keyway is out of the way, I'm going to have Curtis remove all six screws on the trap door. Once the screws are removed, we can remove the trap door and have full access to the front sprocket. A few taps with the mallet so we can break the bond, then we can remove the trap door. Now that the trap door cover has been removed, we have full access to the front drive sprocket. I'm going to have Curtis bend the tab washer again and then remove the high gear nut. Now, based off what you see, Curtis is removing the high gear nut by hand simply because the high gear nut was very, very loose. The sprocket is almost ready to come off, but we have to remove the chain. So Curtis is going to use some pliers here to remove the master clip so we can disconnect the chain. With the master link removed, Curtis is going to withdraw the entire chain. Then Curtis is going to use a 3 8 by 26 stud, thread it into the sprocket to be able to help him extract the sprocket. Now that the sprocket has been removed, he's going to pry the high gear seal. Now the high gear seal is the culprit and the reason why we are going through this entire clutch rebuild. All right, you guys, this is going to wrap today's video. There's going to be a total of three videos in this series. This is video number one, which is clutch disassembly. Video number two is going to be clutch inspection. And then video number three is going to be clutch assembly. If you guys would like to see all the videos and the series that we post regarding this clutch rebuild, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on YouTube. If you guys have any questions, drop us a comment below. Take a look at our description to see all the links. Most of the tools that we've shown here in this video, you can purchase off of our website, classicbritishspares.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.